The Second Book 1. Remember how long thou hast already put off these things, and how often a certain day and hour, as it were, having been set unto thee by the gods, thou hast neglected it. It is high time for thee to understand the true nature both of the world, whereof thou art a part, and of that Lord and Governor of the world, from whom, as a channel from the spring, thou thyself didst flow, and that there is but a certain limit of time appointed unto thee, which if thou shalt not make use of to calm and allay the many distempers of thy soul, it will pass away, and thou with it, and never after return. 2. Let it be thy earnest and incessant care as a Roman and a man to perform whatsoever it is that thou art about, with true and unfeigned gravity, natural affection, freedom and justice. And as for all other cares and imaginations, how thou mayst ease thy mind of them, which thou shalt do, if thou shalt go about every action as thy last action, free from all vanity, all passionate and willful aberration from reason, and from all hypocrisy and self-love and dislike of those things, which by the fates or appointment of God have happened unto thee. Thou seest that those things, which for a man to hold on in a prosperous course, and to live a divine life, are requisite and necessary, are not many. For the gods will require no more of any man, that shall but keep and observe these things. 3. Do, soul, do abuse and contemn thyself. Yet a while and the time for thee to respect thyself will be at an end. Every man's happiness depends from himself, but behold, thy life is almost at an end, whilst affording thyself no respect. Thou dost make thy happiness to consist in the souls and conceits of other men. 4. Why should any of these things that happen externally so much distract thee? Give thyself leisure to learn some good thing and cease roving and wandering to and fro. Thou must also take heed of another kind of wandering, for they are idle in their actions, who toil and labor in this life, and have no certain scope to which to direct all their motions and desires. 5. For not observing the state of another man's soul, scarce was ever any man known to be unhappy. Tell whosoever they be that intend not, and guide not by reason and discretion the motions of their own souls, they must of necessity be unhappy. 6. These things thou must always have in mind. What is the nature of the universe, and what is mine, in particular? This unto that what relation it hath. What kind of part, of what kind of universe it is, and that there is nobody that can hinder thee, but that thou mayest always both do and speak those things which are agreeable to that nature, whereof thou art a part. 7. Theophrastus where he compares sin with sin, as after a vulgar sense such things I grant may be compared, says well and like a philosopher that those sins are greater which are committed through lust than those which are committed through anger. For he that is angry seems with a kind of grief and close contraction of himself to turn away from reason 